This Hi conference there. will now be recorded. Hello. Thank you for attending this webinar. I'm so excited to be here with you today. My name is Jessica Martin, and I am the founder of Martin Management. I help offices do dentistry better. And today I'm excited because we're going to talk about creating a team that will truly thrive and be amazing for your patients and for your business. So I'm going to switch over so you can view my presentation. And if there are questions at the end, I will come back and ask for those as well. All right, so as I mentioned, today we're talking about creating a dental team that thrives, and this is part one. There's just so much information, I couldn't possibly put it all into one, one presentation for you, so we do have a part two that's coming later this week that I'd love to have you tune into because there'll be lots of amazing strategies and nuggets for you in that as well. So a little bit about me. Um, my background is actually in school psychology. So I have a master's in school psychology and in school counseling. I also have an educational specialist degree in school psychology. And then I um, also have my administrative license. So I've worked as a director of special education, kind of overseeing the whole department and hiring staff and whatnot. Um, so essentially I've studied and worked in the field of psychology for the last 17 years. Meanwhile, my husband is a dentist and he's been um, practicing dentistry for a little bit longer than that even. And so about almost 10 years ago now, we purchased a practice in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, that's called Martin Dental. And so I've co-owned that practice with him for the last nine plus years, really been heavily involved in the practice in the last five years. And then most recently I've launched Martin Management, with, which is a dental spa consulting business. I like to share the things that have really worked well in our practice regarding the patient experience with other dental practices so they can do what's great for their patients and also for their business. And that's my family pictured on the right there. We have two little kids, a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. So we are very busy to say the least. So today we're gonna talk about establishing values for your team and for your practice. We're also going to talk about the definition of roles for your team. We're going to talk about how you can encourage teamwork. We're going to talk about a bonus system that can really help to motivate your team. And then also we're going to talk about utilizing strengths and the strengths finder um, movement, book, quiz, whatever, to really have a big impact on the team. So. I love this quote on the right because it says, your energy introduces you before you even speak. I totally believe that's true. And you as the doctor have a huge responsibility in terms of your energy and, and how you're um, relating to your team. Because if your team feels, I guess, scattered or you don't have a great dynamic amongst your team, you're really, your patients are gonna feel that. And so team cohesiveness really does matter. And so really that comes back to your relationship with your team and in each individual that's working for you, that really creates that great dynamic. And so even though you, you, don't, you don't really communicate that to your patients, they do, they do feel that when they walk in, they can feel if everybody's jiving and, and feeling good about their job or if people are at odds. So keep, an, keep aware of that. Um, and how you need to really build those relationships with your team and help them build those relationships with each other because your patients will feel that. So let's talk about establishing values and some of this really, I guess, built into creating that great dynamic. So I like to think about the idea of taking a trip. Let's say you want to go to Disneyland and you throw your team in a car and you say, we're gonna to go to Disneyland, here we go. And you don't give them a map. You, you just kind of hope that they know enough, you know, they know what direction to go in to get you there. Do you think that you will get there as efficiently? Think about another way to think about this. Let's say you have an idea in your head of where you want to go, but you don't tell your team. Your team does not know where the final destination is. And that's where goal setting really comes in. Those are your goals. That's where you want to go. 
if your team isn't privy to that information, they don't know what your goals are, how are they going to get you there? So they really, you really need to know what your goals are and you need to really give them the tools to get there. Up with the idea of establishing goals for your practice and then really creating a mission statement or set of values. Because once you do that, you'll really find that every decision that your team will encounter, and most of these decisions occur without you present, if they know what the values are of the practice, they'll be able to more easily make that decision. So for example, if one of your values is, you know, um, put your patients first. When a decision comes to the front office, let's say there's an emergency situation and there's nowhere to put the person, but they're really in a lot of pain. And the only where to put them is at the end of the day. And nobody likes to stay late, of course, but there's just nowhere else to put them. And this person really is, is needing to be seen. If they know that, what do you think will happen? They will put them in at the end of the day. Your front office person will talk with, you know, an assistant and say, hey, can you stay late? And they'll all come to that agreement that, you know, they should do. This is what's right to put that patient first. So there's a lot of offices or even business coaches that recommend, you know, coming up with something really elaborate and beautiful that you can put on your website. I think that really bogs us down and you know we're on a moving train we need to keep things rolling so what i like to do is really just be simple be clear and put it somewhere visible so it doesn't need to be out for the world to see necessarily it needs to be for your team to get the idea ingrained in their brain of what your values are and what your mission statement is so for us it's not even like a mission statement per se it's just some values that are bulleted that we put by all the time so that they can keep that in the front of their mind. Defining roles. So for your team to really function well and cohesively, everybody needs to kind of know who does what. And so what I recommend is having each member of your team develop a duty list. And this is really great for when you know, you need to, you notice something that's not happening in the practice. Usually that's what happens. You notice like so-and-so, or you, you notice something, some task isn't being done. Well, if there's not a duty list, it's easy to point fingers. Well, it's not my job, it's someone else's. But if everybody has those duties laid out, then you can easily say, wow, okay, this person's not doing what they need to do. That's on their duty list. So I, I would recommend having each team member type up their things and maybe or maybe you need to take things out maybe they're taking on too much that that some of those tasks need to be moved over to a different individual whatever that looks like um, this is also great for turnover situations as well so let's say suddenly your hygienist leaves you and you um, need to train somebody new in that role and how do you possibly things that maybe the hygienist was doing that you weren't even really aware of the things got done but you're not sure as the doctor who who did what. And so these lists are really great to, to rely on as you need to when you need to train new people as well. And they also help you get ahead of overlap issues. So there are situations like, you know, taking out the garbage in the lab or, um, you know, restocking certain things. If there are issues that maybe overlap between um, different members of your team, you can, this is a great opportunity for you to look at the task lists and say, okay, these are overlap situations. Here's how I want you to handle it. This person, I'd like you to do this and this person, I'd like you to do that or trade on and off or whatever. That way you're making sure that not, not one person is doing everything because that certainly creates resentment even from the best team members. And then I also recommend putting a list in the lab of tasks to do when there's downtime. So we certainly don't want there to be holes in the schedule and you know there's a lot of ways we can prevent there from being holes in the schedule that's a different that's a different presentation but if there is unexpected downtime it's great to have a list of things that can be done so that people aren't just aimlessly kind of wandering around or checking their phones when that hole does appear they can look to that list and say oh wow we don't do this very often let's tackle that um it just gives them some clear guidance on you know how to handle that extra time that might pop up Along with defining roles, um, this has been something that we've implemented in our practice in Wisconsin, and it really does help the doctor to keep track of who's doing what. So, as I mentioned, you know, having your team write down, you know, the, the tasks that they individually will do, 
Um, this is a nice thing that we've put into place recently that allows the doctor to really see who's doing what and your team to see who's doing what. So we put this on a Google Drive document and the team member just simply initials the duties that they've done each week. So we have a different document for each week. And then at the end of the week, the doctor checks this document and keeps track of who's doing what and if there's overlap and whatnot. This will allow the doctor to create some efficiencies maybe that the team wouldn't otherwise think of. It allows you to see if one person's carrying more of the load than others and that kind of thing. And it really helps people to be accountable because they know that the doctor's coming back to look at this. They're gonna wanna make sure that they um, went through and, and attended to all of these tasks. The other thing that it really helps with is regarding just keeping on top of like um, stocking rooms, for example. So what we were doing in the past is just as things were running out, the office assistant would, you know, oh, grab, we gotta grab cups or we need, we need towels or whatever. This really trains your team to go through room so that they can get it restocked. That will allow you to be more on top of ordering supplies so that that's done more efficiently and you won't really ever run out of anything because you're restocking then you're doing your placing your order for supplies and keeping everything really clean and organized and then the other um little piece of advice that i came up with at our practice was is called what would the doctor do so we found that in our office people were not utilizing their own problem solving skills and we knew that and skills but I think they were nervous I think they were nervous to make the wrong decision and that sometimes can cost the practice money so if they call you know the IT team to fix something that we could have used our practice management software live help for now there's a bill associated with that call and the doctor might be upset about that so I think that was what their concern was but to really alleviate this we came up with a list of common issues that occur and then we got really detailed with okay well, this is what I would do first. This is the person I would call. This is the phone number of that person. And really got to the point where we had every problem that we could think of really lined out with steps for how to solve it and who to, who to utilize in what order with solving those problems. And so that really allowed for our team to be more independent in what they were doing. And a lot of those issues then weren't even needed to be brought to the doctor's attention because they were solved before the end of the day when he would have known about them or he would have had to be interrupted with patients to help solve them so some examples even silly things like landscape you know he or she should because if your office manager is on the phone for a long call and the you know the situation's occurring it's great to have this what would the doctor do you know, document available to your team in a couple of different places so that anybody could really tackle the problem. The bonus system. So what's great about a practice being really successful is that monetarily with your team. And so as our office got to be busier and busier, we we decided we wanted to really reward our team for helping us achieve the goals that we were that we were setting forth. So initially we we kind of had an icky taste in our mouth about using production as a goal because it it didn't feel I guess it didn't feel ethical or authentic. We really wanted to focus on bringing in new patients. That was our initial goal. So we had let's say we we want to bring in 25 new patients a month and if we hit that goal then we would give our team a bonus. It was really simple. But what we realized is that not everybody in the practice was really necessarily bringing in those new patients it was one or two people in the marketing department or who are out doing networking and not everybody was necessarily carrying that load and so we did need to come become more specific about the production um, component of the goal and now this isn't to say that we're, we're hitting trying to hit a production number so we're going to really push patients to get work that they don't need that is absolutely not the case i, I still stand by the idea that we can only treatment plan work that's there. We can encourage patients to do what's best for them, but this isn't meant to be pushy whatsoever. And so I just hope that's clear in terms of, you know, having a bonus system tied to a production goal. So what we came up with was this formula. So it's net production plus collections divided by two, divided by the number of days that the doctor works. And that becomes our daily average. And we put the number of days doctor works in there because there are times of the year that 
doctor wants to take a vacation and we didn't want our team to feel you know penalized for him being gone and so if we keep hygiene going while he's gone um, they actually get a really great bump in this formula because it's not even including the days that he's missing and they're going to be making production is going to still remain fairly high because hygiene is still going so that's just an example of how we do that and then we had to come up with a goal so initially we had increased net daily production slash collection by an average of one hundred dollars and and then when the goal is achieved each full-time person would earn one hundred dollars toward the bonus for that month and so we do have a part-time employee um, she would earn fifty dollars for that bonus for that month for example so here are some other details if we hit three this goal three months in a row then we would raise the bonus to 150 a month and then we obviously need to alter the goal so we we increase that um, net daily production slash collection average by a certain dollar amount to reach that goal and then for each day an employee misses work in the month the bonus was earned their bonus will be reduced by 25 percent so for example if two sick days are used the employee will receive 50 percent of the team earned bonus that month that's just again to you know create an atmosphere where people can feel like they had to be here to contribute and they're not being penalized if doctor's gone. So those are the details. And we are really surprised when we first put this bonus system in place, we thought, wow, an extra $100 a day um, on average, that's a lot. And so, wow, we feel really great about rewarding each person on our team $100 for that month because that's gonna be a lot more money on the bottom line for the overall production. And we, we've we consistently, and once we established these goals, have um, hit them again and again, and it's been really cool to see. So really, I urge you to set a goal that you're happy with. You know, you certainly don't wanna do this formula at the end of the month and be bummed out that your team gets this extra money because really, you should set it up so that you're, you're earning more and the team is earning more. It really should be a win-win. And then you can all celebrate because it's a great thing that the practice is doing that well. Another thing that kind of ties into this is really the the board at the right here. And so you'll see at the very top some of the values that we kind of hold true for our team. Um, and they actually came up with those, which I loved. But on the right hand side, I hope you can see it. We did. And the things that they could do to help reach the goal. And I really think that's important. We actually typed up the formula and gave them all the details about how to hit the, the bonus each month um, because we want them to know what they can do to move to move that money forward and so we got really detailed on the handout but on our marker board we just have you know I, I'm review comfort form so making sure that's part of our dental spa concept is really making sure that we know what our patients are looking for in terms of comfort and spa amenities and making sure their experience is amazing. So reviewing those ahead of time, making sure the experience is fabulous for the patient, seating the patient as soon as possible, um, doing some turnover teamwork. So if hygiene finished a little bit early and or maybe a little bit late, let's say, and they're, you know, she's trying to get her room clean for the next patient, whoever's the office assistant can really help expedite that so that her patient's seated um, as close to being on time as possible. That can really help everything flow better, um, help fill in last minute cancellations. So gosh, every now and then we'll have like a two hour you know, cancellation right before the person was set to come in. They're sick or they completely forgot or what, whatever the situation is. And then our office manager and our front office person are scrambling, scrambling to try to fill that hole very quickly. Sometimes the assistant remembers, gosh, last week we, we, we you know, um, there was a broken canal that we needed to get in that available really try to help fill in those holes can really be amazing and then watching inventory closely those are things that each person on the team can do to really help contribute to that bonus um, production goal if you will so you can see like i mentioned the values are listed there at the top make make our patients feel like family we really want people to to feel that vibe from our whole team while they're with us they are, are the most important thing we want them to know that we're not distracted by our cell phones, that we really are tuned into what they need and what they want and making their visit amazing. And then we appreciate our patients and their time. So that's sticking to the schedule so that we're not you know, running far behind on schedule, if at all possible, being conscientious of that and really really being grateful that they chose our practice. That Those are the values we want each person on the team to represent. 
And then for the doctor, you know, be the model for this. You know, you have to really believe in these values and, and be the model type person that's showing your team how to behave with these values. Feedback from the doctor and manager. So try as much as you can to catch your team doing great things. This really encourages everybody to really work together um, efficiently. So it's so much easier to notice what things aren't going right. But if you're looking for those good things, I promise you, you will notice them more and really tell people. If you if you can in the moment, awesome. If you need to wait till the end of the day or even it's a text message in the evening, whatever it is, just make sure you're telling them when they're doing wonderful things because that's going to increase the frequency of them doing those wonderful things. Another thing that we do is we focus on weekly wins. So on our Monday morning staff meeting, we have each of our team members go around and really talk about something that was amazing from the week before, something they're proud of, something that went well, something that they feel like was a win for them. And that really starts off the week with a really positive spin for everybody. And I think you can add to this further, especially if you want to really hone in on teamwork is you could ask those weekly wins to be something that something that focuses on how they helped another part of the team. So they're going to look for ways to be helpful to one another and then they report back to that at that meeting and everybody feels great and feels supported, which is awesome. And we're really gonna talk more about very specific strategies about encouraging teamwork more in part two of this webinar. So stay tuned for that. And last but not least, The Strengths Finder. If you've never read this book, it's really interesting. Um, I, you know, once I took the quiz that's in each book that you get, um, I really learned a lot about myself. It was things that I kind of knew, but it, it put a, a word to that strength of mine. For example, one of my greatest strengths is maximizer. So I have a really great ability to take a situation and really tweak it to make it even better and maximize that. And so once I had a word for it, it just made it made more sense to me and it almost empowered me to use it more because I know that that's my greatest strength. So I encourage you to read this book um, and to take the quiz and find out what are your greatest strengths. And I would encourage you to get a book for every member on your team and encourage them to at minimum take the quiz. Like it's hard to ask people on your team to read a whole book. I know that's kind of a lot to ask um, on our team. and have them each take the quiz and report what their strengths were. And then it, it also, if you look online, actually, there's a nice little graph that you can put everybody's name in and then list all the strengths and you can kind of plot where everybody, um, where everyone's strengths are. And that's really a kind of a nice way to look at your whole team as a snapshot. Um, but it also really helps to put tasks on their plate that they're really probably amazing at because they're strengths of theirs. And what's awesome about that is when you give people tasks that they, are really great at, they feel empowered and they report liking their job more and they feel a sense of ownership. And so you might be able to take things off their plate that maybe aren't strengths of theirs and put them on another person's plate that does have those strengths and really kind of reconfigure who's doing what to a degree and really make the office run more effectively. And I, you know, I told our team, please just take the quiz. And then when you get those top few strengths, read that chapter that talks about what those strengths are in more detail, and it'll give you ways to really um, even do more with those strengths. So I think it's really interesting. And I really think the office will benefit from the talents that you have um, are there for your team. Like for example, our office manager, she's really good at like details, right? Like putting together little baskets and, and doing our porch pod and just like kind of creative things. And so when those things arise, I always ask, hey, would you mind doing this? Or do you not, do you not have time? Or I'll pay you extra to do some of these things outside of the work time. And she's always, she jumps at it because she's like, I love doing that stuff. Yes, I want to do it. So um, you, you just never know what untapped potential might be there that could help everything go more smoothly. And then I just wanted to give you some results from our team, just because I think it's really neat to see successes, right, of, of what other practices are doing. So at our office, we have quadrupled our new patient monthly average. We've received the award as the best dental practice in our community four years in a row, and we have a really full schedule. We really don't, um, you know, we don't have open time, which is great for production, as you know, and we do have a large waiting list for when those, you know, kind of last minute holes do occur. We're very apt to be able to fill them because we have people waiting um, to get crowns done sooner or restorative work done sooner or whatnot. So 
that's really great for the bottom line. And then we also just really have a calm workplace for our staff and that that makes people want to stick around. They want to be a part of our team. They feel the energy, they feel the dynamic being great and um and that's that's what everybody really wants I think out of their job. They want to do something they love, but they want to do it with people that they where everybody is cohesive, everyone gets along. And a lot of these things are um, that we talked about today are ways you can help your team to do that. So much of the success uh, you know, that I show you here on our stats is really a lot of it's about becoming a dental spa. And so you can see me for questions about that because that's a whole nother presentation. But I am absolutely certain that none of this would, be would not be possible without a solid team. If our team wasn't solid and wasn't um, really efficient and really have a great dynamic, even the best system in place wouldn't help our team to thrive and, and produce these kind of stats. So I hope this webinar helped give you some, a starting point for making your team even better. Tune in to part two for more strategies for creating a thriving team. And I just really appreciate you, your time today. If you do have any questions about anything we covered, feel free to contact me. Uh, my email is there, my phone number is there, and um, you can find me on Facebook as well as LinkedIn. And truly, it is my mission to help as many offices do dentistry better as I can because um, we're doing amazing work for people. And I want your office to grow. I want your patients to be happy. I want everyone to win. So that is my mission. Have a great rest of the day.